Hi everyone, it's so good to see you. I hope you've all had a good week. I'm having a good week. Well, I was, I think. But now, I'm a little nervous. I'm trying to learn how to walk on this tightrope. But to be honest, it's a little scary up here and I'm, I'm quite nervous that I'm going to fall. How do we get confidence? Well, friends, you're in the right place. In our series, we've been looking at confidence and we're learning that real confidence always comes from knowing who God is and knowing who God says we are. Now, come with me. We've got so much to explore today. Welcome back to our sound room, everyone. I love it in here with all these cool buttons. This sound room really helps us out with all our stories. But before we get into that, I think we have time for a quick game. Do you guys want to play? Awesome. OK, so do you remember this cool button? It's the play button. So here's how today's game works. I press play, and you show me your coolest dance moves. But when I press pause, you have to sit down as fast as you can. In fact, I've brought in a friend to show you just how it's done. Are you guys ready to play? Okay, let's try. Are you guys sitting down? Did you remember? All right, let's try it again. Did you guys remember? Well done, boys and girls. That was great. Guys, that was so much fun. I think it's time to press play on the Bible story. Do you know what? I love a story with an amazing hero. Every good story has a hero, right? Sometimes they're super strong. Sometimes they're super fast. Sometimes they're super smart. Sometimes they're super brave. I'm so excited to meet the hero of today's story. So without further ado, let me introduce you to our hero. He is the one, the only. His name is Gideon. And he was super scared. Can that be right? Well, <laughs> here he is, Gideon, who was super scared. Okay, so Gideon was someone who had a little bit of trouble feeling confident. But you know what? God still used him. Now, if I describe where I am, can you guess where I am? I'm in a place that's really dark. There's not so much light at all, really. It's a bit damp, too. The ground is made of rock, and the walls are made of rock. And my voice echoes a bit. Hello! Do you know where I am? That's right. I'm in a cave. I'm in a cave because our story comes from the book of Judges in the Old Testament. And it's about God's people, the Israelites. And Gideon, our hero, was one of God's people. He was just an ordinary guy. At a time when things were not going so well for God's people, the Israelites had turned away from God 
and things got pretty chaotic. So God allowed a group of people called Midianites to take over their land. Things were a bit scary. The Midianites destroyed almost everything, their crops, their houses, and their livestock. God's people had to hide in caves like this one. After these terrible things had happened in their land, the Israelites cried out to God for help. Whew, oh, thank goodness. I'm back, it was, it was getting cold in there. So when God's people cried out to him, he listened. He sent the angel of the Lord to Gideon, our hero, and Gideon trusted God and was ready to save the Israelites from danger, the end. Hmm. Except that that wasn't how it happened. Our hero wasn't at all ready to fight off the Midianites. In fact, when the angel appeared to Gideon, he was hiding. Let's press play on the story. Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. You say the Lord is with us. Then why has all of this happened to us? He has handed us over to the Midianites. So the angel called Gideon a hero. And Gideon was a bit confused. He needed a little more convincing. You are strong. <gasps> Go and save your nation, the Israelites, from the power of the Midian. I am sending you. Pardon me, sir. But how can I possibly save Israel? My family group is the weakest in the tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least important member of my family. But then the Lord turned to Gideon and said, go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. And from that day onwards, Gideon still didn't feel confident. He even asked the angel for a special sign to make sure that this really was God talking and promising these things. And you know what? A short time later, Gideon asked God for another sign, just to be sure God really was with him. God did exactly that. At last, Gideon was convinced that God was with him. Let's fast forward a little. Some time later, Gideon camped together with 32,000 men and prepared for battle. That's a big army, don't you think? Do you think Gideon was feeling a bit more confident now? Well, I think he was. But then the Lord spoke to Gideon again. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many warriors with you. If I let all of you fight the Midianites, the Israelites will boast to me that they saved themselves by their own strength. You see, God didn't want his people to rely on having a big army. He wanted them to rely on him. So Gideon had 32,000 men, but the Lord told him to let everyone who was a bit scared go home. And 22,000 people left. So now Gideon only had 10,000 men. Well, that's still quite a lot. But wait, God wasn't done yet. There were still too many. God sent the men down to the river and told them to have a drink. How would you drink from a river? Would you use your hands like a cup? Or you would just stick your head right in it? Well, that's how God chose the man for the army. Only the men that use their hands like a cup were allowed to stay. And do you know how many there were? Only 300 men. Well, Gideon really needed God's help now. Do you think he felt confident yet? Get up. <gasps> Go down into the Midianite camp 
for I have given you victory over them. But if you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp. Listen to what the Midianites are saying, and you will be greatly encouraged. Then you will be eager to attack. So Gideon crept down close to the camp and heard two men talking very quietly. One of the men had had a really strange dream. I had a dream. A round loaf of barley bread came rolling into the camp of Midian. It hit a tent with great force. The tent turned over and fell down flat. That can only be the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash. Gideon is from Israel. God has handed the Midianites over to him. He's given him the whole camp. <gasps> Wait, so these people knew Gideon's name? And they also knew that God was with him. Well, Gideon felt a sudden rush of confidence. He bowed to worship God. Then he hurried back to the camp and woke his men. He then gave a trumpet and torch and a jar to each man and told them to surround the Midianite camp. Gideon had the men smash their jars, light their torches, and blow their trumpets as loudly as they could. And in the midst of all that noise, they shouted a battle cry. A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. The Midianites were completely shocked and confused. They, they started to fight each other. They ran away, crying out in fear. Gideon and the Israelites had won the battle. Wow. If you think about it, Gideon wasn't exactly the most likely hero. No one expected much from him, and he didn't even expect much of himself. He was full of doubt and uncertainty, but he still chose to follow God. And God used him to do something absolutely incredible. God used Gideon to save the Israelite people. Gideon's confidence ultimately came from trusting in God. Do you remember our memory verse for this series? Awesome, let's read it together. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27, verse 13. Wow, what a promise. Let's pray. God, thank you for showing us that we can believe in you and trust you, even when we may not feel that sure about ourselves. Please help us see ourselves the way you see us. Help us to trust you and remember that you can use us no matter what. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name and let everybody say, Amen. What an amazing story, you know? Gideon and the Israelites didn't need thousands of strong soldiers to win the battle because God was with them. What can we learn from this, friends? Well, I think we can learn that no matter what's going on around us, no matter how small or uncertain we might feel, we can trust God no matter what. And you know what else? Friends, Gideon wasn't sure he was the right guy for the job, but God used him to do big things. God can do big things through us too, even though we sometimes don't feel ready. So our bottom line is, God can use you no matter what. As we worship boys and girls, if you're not feeling very confident, Ask God to tell you what he says about you. Let that be how you see yourself this week. Let's worship God together now. Who am I that the highest king 
would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me, and know his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free.